So this is the controller for the uh, Rutland 1200. Uh, it's got a rattle. So I have uh, emailed them and uh, they told me to take it apart and have a look inside and see whether we can find out what's gone wrong. So here we go. It's a heat sink. I'm not having much luck today. This uh, unit's all falling off. This is a remote control. I guess the whole box must have got pretty shaken yeah. up. The first job we had to do was to have the mounting pole made. I had to find a local company to fabricate the 3 metre tall pole in Curacao and make the supporting beams. If I was doing this again, I would purchase the mounting kit from Rutland. You can take that off actually. The next job was to feed the three 6mm cables from the control unit through the boat and through the main stirred bolt. For this we used a small water pump as a drill. So I put the uh, three cables inside this little bit of trunking, flexible trunking, and I'm just going to cable tie it to all these existing uh, cables here so it's tucked up out of the way. Can't get into any issues with anything like the steering. last one isn't it Dobby? You've been counting haven't you? Three. Ah. Oh no. He's got to jump up onto my back. Any opportunity he gets while you're working. On the uh, wind generator they go in there. This one here is the input for solar panels if you had solar panels. So over here we have two outputs, one for battery bank 1, one for battery bank 2, and this one's for the heat sensor. So I'm not going to use this for my um, my engine battery because I just don't need it. So I want all the power to go into my main battery bank. This is the cable going to the um, batteries, and it does matter which way around it goes. It's very important it goes around the right way. So we're going to strip these back and put them on. I'm putting it all on out here, and then I'm going to screw it into the boat. And then I've got to cover these cables or something. These are quite hefty cables, they're six mil. Um, because there's quite a bit of ampage there, and also the distance that it runs, you have to take that into consideration. But there's a little uh, graph with a kit that tells you what size cable to use. Okay, so that is on battery one. Excellent. This is the uh, heat center probe, so that's going to be lived down by the batteries. Here's the other end. You just click that in here. Remote temperature sensor. 
So this is the battery compartment here, and I'm just feeding the cables through from the controller, which I've placed over here. They can't really be more than one and a half metres away, so it will be a bit of a sort of... As I'm doing this, it's really difficult to get wires in and out here, so I'm putting an extra wire in that I can use as a pull wire, draw wire next time round. So hopefully, if I have to get in here again, it will make it very easy. This is a heat sensor, and they're not very clear on where to put it, but I think what I'll do is I'll just attach it kind of like over the top of one of the batteries. So for example just here, so that uh, if anything starts to get really hot, we'll know that. <coughs> Right, Dob is always here. Always has to be watching what is going on. No. Okay, so I saw a 6mm cable coming from the controller and I'm going to put a crimp on the end so that it fits there nice. I don't want to put uh, wires around there or anything like that so just crimp that one there, the yellow one, make sure it's in the middle. Okay, and we'll do that for the other two. That's the live, that's the neutral, and the other one of course is the control, which we have here, which is actually a much smaller cable. And this goes on to the uh, positive side of the battery. And that will monitor the uh, rate of charge and things like that. It's not a necessity apparently, but it is if the cables are over one and a half metres, which mine are close to one and a half metres. Okay, so basically those two will go on to the positive side of the battery supply. They always have to be connected, there can't be any fuses, switches or anything in between. And the neutral will go on here. And then all we have to do is uh, connect the uh, wind turbine up when the man arrives with the um, pole. So that's my draw wire I put in for the next time I need to get in here. This is the connection for the actual wind generator and even though these cables are marked red, green and blue, it does not matter which one goes on which.
pen. So it says in the book. I've chosen to do crimps here as opposed to using what we call choppy block. Terminal block. This is a lot better, safer. put some heat shrink over there to try and keep it nice and dry and protected. You need some extra cable here so you can get it down if you need to. I was going to ask you that. Now, according to the book, we have to put some Vaseline around here. Do you know it's very heavy? screws which are in this little bag. This one? And the screwdriver, the blue one, the small blue one, sitting up, that's it. All done. This is our control panel with all the electrics and battery monitor, central heating, satellite uh, dish and this is uh, the uh, remote control for the old inverter with nothing wrong with it at all but uh, I'm taking that out and I've marked it here and I'm going to put this uh, remote display in here should go in there just about perfectly maybe just a little bit more this way We have the uh, remote control cable. This one goes to the uh, remote display, so that just clips in there. I installed the control unit in a cupboard in the port half and connected the last few cables to the system. It was only when I was editing this video I discovered that Dobby had gone for a little trip inside. Today. It's got a few gusts coming through and you can see it's doing 10, 55, 10. It goes up to 25, 30 amp hours sometimes. And this is six weeks in and we've, uh, we've actually, uh, it has made 4,331 amp hours. So uh, that's pretty good going. Really it's made all the difference to us. Wow. 
I have to say, it wasn't quite as easy to uh, assemble as it appears in uh, Rutman's video. And what I would do if I bought another one, I'd buy their kit. Uh, I thought because we were in uh, the Netherlands Caribbean, it would be expensive and difficult to get it shipped here because it would obviously be a metre and a half long. And I thought, well, by the time I paid the tax and the air freight and all that sort of thing, I'd probably be cheaper to get the pole made. Uh, the guy's done a good job. I'm really pleased, quite pleased with the pole and the uh, bars. But uh, to be honest, just buy the kit. It'd be so much easier with their kit. You'd have all the fittings. You wouldn't have to worry about anything. It'd just go together perfectly. Um, it was just a fiddle. Yeah. It was just a fiddle. So now we have to go and turn it on and let it go around. Do you know what? I know now we won't get any wind anywhere. No. <laughs> <laughs>